All right. Well, my tests are done, but they're not pretty. Here, let me run them, see if they even work. Nice, they passed. Oh, hey, it's Charles. Hey, Barls, how's it going? Hey, Charles, pretty good. Just about to push some code for my sheep game. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's really coming along. I'm excited to finish up the core mechanics so I can finally put a demo together. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I can't wait to see it. Same here. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So, need help with anything? Nope, I've got everything under control. Huh, well, shoot. I was hoping you'd give me something good to work on today. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but I'd be happy to walk you through the latest code if you'd like to see it. Sure, why not? All right, let me share my screen. Ooh, I like that scene. Thanks, I watched this awesome video on level design the other day that really helped me create it. Nice, I'd love to check that out. Sure, I'll send you a link. Thanks. So what are we looking at here? Right, so my latest change includes harvesting. Cool. And wait for it, respawning too. Very cool, man. Looks like you're really getting the hang of things. Yeah, I think I actually am. I even wrote unit tests for this. No way. Yep. Want to see them? Sure. So I only have two, but I think they're enough to cover the core functionality. Okay. The first one tests that the mushrooms harvest method returns a consumable when mushrooms are harvestable. And the second one tests that it returns null when they aren't. Nice. It's quite a bit of setup code here, but yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's the one thing I really don't know how to deal with. I want to keep my tests simple, but the mushroom class just has a lot of dependencies. Mm-hmm. It's a common problem when working with engines or frameworks. Your logic just tends to get wrapped up in a bunch of system level code. Yeah, it stinks, but there's just no way around it. Well, actually, there are a few strategies that you could use. Really? Sure. For one, you can encapsulate all of your setup logic by extracting lines 39 through 50 into a method. Hmm, okay. So I'll just grab all of this and use extract method. Let's call it Set up mushroom. Yep, and be sure to set the return type to mushroom too. Right. And you can deselect the make static option. All right, not bad. Yeah, it's definitely looking much better, but this approach does have its drawbacks. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, even though you've hidden them away, those dependencies are still there and they still require all of that setup. Hmm, yeah, that's true. And I'm sure they'll only get harder to maintain as my project grows, right? That's right. So what should I do? I think we should apply the same concept we use for the setup logic to the mushroom class itself. Hmm. Go on. Here, open up the mushroom class and I'll show you. Sure. All right. So if you scroll down to the harvest method for me, we can see that the logic you're actually testing amounts to just four lines of code. Lines 32, 33, 37 and 45. Oh yeah, you're right. I don't really care what happens to the collider or the sprite renderer. I just want to know that the method is returning a consumable when it's harvestable and nothing when it's not. Exactly. So why don't we extract that logic into a POCO and then test that instead? A what? <laughs> a POCO. That stands for plain old C-sharp class. Oh, so basically not a mono behavior. Right. Mono behaviors rely on Unity's ecosystem to function, but POCOs can be instantiated and run in a vacuum. So they're perfect for testing. Hmm. Right. That makes sense. So where do we begin? Well, first, we need to create a class to migrate all of this logic to. Why don't you create one called Harvestable? OK. Now we need to move all of the relevant fields and properties over. Gotcha. That would be effect and amount, and the is harvestable property. Right, that should be all you need because we're gonna let the mono behavior handle the cooldown. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, since it relies on a coroutine. Exactly. Next, create a constructor for those public fields and then make them private. Sure. This will make the class easier to test and less prone to error. Perfect. Now you can add the harvest method and grab the logic from mushroom. Cool, almost done. We just need to expose a way to reset harvestable objects. 
I think we should create a method called respawn. Yeah, that sounds good. And I'll just have it reset is harvestable, right? Exactly. Looking good. The only thing left to do now is to reference this code inside of Mushroom. That shouldn't be too bad. All I need to do is add a field. Initialize it and start. And then reference it in the harvest method. Hmm. Looks like you'll need to replace that inline instantiation. Oh, right. With a call to harvestable.harvest. Yep. And I can also update the rest of this code. Don't forget the code routine. Right. I need to call respawn. Mm-hmm. Oh, and one last thing. This is harvestable property should delegate to the harvestable class. And now I'm done. Awesome. Why don't you rerun your test to make sure you didn't break anything? Okay. Huh, they passed. Beautiful. Now we can delete them. Delete them? <laughs> well, to be fair, replace them with tests of the harvestable class instead. Oh, right, because we've extracted all the important logic. Exactly. Why don't you create a test class for harvestable and recreate the tests side by side so we can compare? Yeah, that's a great idea. And these can actually be edit mode tests, which don't rely on a running scene to run. Oh, nice. I'll call the class harvestable tests. and add a test called return a consumable when harvestable. Cool, now just recreate the test using the harvestable class. Yep, first I'll arrange. Then act. and then assert. Perfect, now run it and see if it passes. Awesome, yeah. And look at that code comparison. That is a much cleaner test on the right. Oh yeah, this is so much better. Way easier to read and maintain. Gotta love humble objects. Humble objects? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, everything we just did was based on a design pattern called the humble object pattern, which is a behavioral pattern that provides a way to separate non-trivial code from components that are hard to instantiate due to being too closely coupled to their environment. Huh, just like mono behaviors. That's right. So in this case, mono behavior is the humble object, right? Yep, that's correct. Once we strip out all the logic, it becomes nothing more than a bare bones object that's responsible for handling unity level stuff and delegating calls to our real code. Wow, that's pretty cool. I had no idea that pattern even existed or that we were using it to solve my problem. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it goes. Design patterns simply describe well-known solutions to well-known problems. And this is a common one in unity. Nice. Another tool in my developer toolkit. <laughs> that's the spirit. And look at that. You gave me a fun problem to solve after all. Ha, huh, that's right. Glad I could be of service. Much appreciated. <laughs> well, man, I actually have to jump off now. All right. Hey, thanks for all of your help. Hey, anytime. I'll catch you later, okay? All right, later. Bye. Thank you to all of my patrons. And a special shout out to Amara Duranovic, Dark Rush Photography, Dustin, Glasswell Entertainment, Mighty Possum, Nav from Academy of Games, R Star, Thomas, Trond, Yusuf Ali Kassel, Yakub Asafari, and Iron Alex. Thanks, guys.